Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India look at the visual culture from a purely aesthetic perspective to understand what is uh, the stylistic identity and how the stylistic identity gets established over the uh, long period of time uh, in spite of facing lots of uh, changes in terms of its socio-political uh, conditions. Uh, the other factors which are connected to economy, uh, the change in uh, the religious dominance and there are stories that is going to be um, open to you in uh, the coming lectures and there are certain things that I would like to repeat to emphasize on uh, the aspects where uh, our way of viewing the tradition and the traditional art forms uh, which are connected to the folk art and minor art uh, will get uh, justice in terms of its critical viewing. So, it is very important to understand the secular aspect of the practice as well as the religious plurality that they enjoy uh, and we enjoy as viewers and that is a wonder factor because there is some kind of a contradictory connection that uh, must not be uh, ignored. Uh, if I just uh, give you some clue to understand that, you will understand uh, that when we say it is a community practice, even now to be very frank uh, that in our country at least we do not see that people from different uh, communities live together under the same roof uh, unless it is a uh, urban space which is uh, having a metropolitan culture. So, in the rural India when we are talking about the rural art uh, we see that it is almost like a challenge where the communities uh, they are staying together in harmony uh, through their art and culture. So, there are certain factors which uh, remove the conflict that they have and makes them uh, get tuned and stay in harmony. So, it may sound highly utopian, but that is a possibility that uh, folk and minor art provides us with. So, when a performance of this sort takes place which is a combination of some visual um, aesthetical images along with some interesting and uh, free flowing lyric, uh, beautiful tunes, music, uh, dance, rhythm and all the combinations they create harmony, uh, it, it, it's, it does not really matter uh, whether there are multiple re, uh, religion and culture uh, that are coming together there. Uh, it is for sure that they will come with conflicts and get harmonized at the end of it and that is a basic idea perhaps. And I would like to uh, also mention quite a few tradition uh, which are from our neighboring countries and they are excellent example to realize this particular spirit uh, that is working as a a positive factor for the habitual art practices for years. Uh, what we see in this visual culture that uh, in many of the places when somebody is working on uh, a religious text, it is only religion that is connected in the storytelling and the characters are becoming more human. So, they are getting humanized. As uh, in our previous lecture, I was mentioning about the character Chan Sadagar. 
in the Patichitra that I showed, it is a Manasa pot. Uh, what we could make out that Manasa is one secondary goddess. Uh, she is a goddess which uh, who was not getting enough respect throughout and she is just gave, trying to get uh, some kind of an importance for a particular community in a particular time which is uh, part of the medieval era and her stories are part of the medieval uh, literature and in that time whether she exists or not but her followers are trying to introduce this character to the larger community by uh, by injecting fear, fantasies uh, that is connected to a visual which is also very rich. The stories are often coming with a great visual possibilities so that the painters they feel inspired to paint images on the basis of that story no matter which uh, religion uh, they believe in, but if the story is appealing enough, that becomes universal. So, although I mentioned many stories about the expulsion of uh, the artists from the communities, which are quite widespread without much of an authenticity, uh, like um, if I make you remember uh, that uh, I told you about a very funny story, a very interesting one. I should not call it funny, but uh, it, it has some kind of a, uh, uh, interesting part in it that they, uh, the painter uh, who was painting Shiva without Shiva's permission, then Shiva comes into the picture uh, and in the fear that Shiva would get offended and something very uh, disastrous will take place, uh, the painters got scared and uh, he, uh, what he does is uh, he, he hides the paintbrush inside his mouth. So, instead of being offended with his act of painting uh, the image of Shiva, the Lord Shiva himself, he got much more angry for the fact that the artist had disrespected his material that is his paintbrush. So, why should he put it in inside his mouth because that is a sign of disrespect that uh, he was showing to the paintbrush. So, he gets angry and he expelled the uh, artist and his entire community. Uh, so, this is indicative. Uh, of course, it cannot be a fact because uh, nobody has uh, seen Lord Shiva uh, to be part of the human community, but uh, that is a character which is uh, imaginary and there are the religious uh, uh, stories that are connected to it and there the artist encounters the deity himself and the story finally provides us with a lot of visual possibilities. So, when we see that there is a possibility, a strength of visual making in a story, the stories are uh, getting very randomly picked up and uh, the stories are always welcomed. Uh, from any tradition anywhere. So, this is one aspect of expulsion that we get to see. There are also other stories where uh, this artists were commissioned uh, by some uh, royal patrons and they felt that these people cannot be controlled under any uh, uh, royal means. So, uh, they said that these people are too moody to be accommodative in the royal court for uh, the uh, public uh, commissions. Uh, so, these people are again thrown out and uh, they got back to their own community in their own comfort zones uh, and they lived uh, like a pauper happily. Uh, so, these are the stories that go on, but what we are trying to understand from it that whenever there is a visual possibility and there are, uh, whenever there is a new character that is uh, taking place, it is getting uh, highly popularized in the community because through the character, uh, the viewers or the audiences, they are trying to understand life and the ethos of life um, at large. So, when there is the character called Chan Saudagar, he is a character who is making a protest that 
nobody can insert fear in him and he was not willing to compromise so it's the story of his struggle his fight and that keeps the people close to the character uh, the viewers they identify themselves with the character of chan sodagar who is very famous there are writers who are also mentioning and writing stories on that character chan sodagar where they're talking about humanity they're talking about humanism which is a very very modern aspect that has come from the medieval and dark age and uh, then modernity is all about uh, humanity where uh, even the deities the gods and goddesses they are created by human being unless the human beings are recognizing them they they are insecure so by the story of manasa it shows that he she also needs the support of uh, human beings she needs the support of the community otherwise the existence of uh, that goddess uh, would be no nowhere uh, so these are the aspects that kept people engaged with those stories and then from a, a religious purpose it moved to a greater aspect that was more secular so let's go back and see some images uh, that was part of the wall in the public places how folk and minor art had another aspect that was connected to the popular images so folk art gave birth to popular art later in the modern period although these two types of arts are not uh, principally similar they have some differences but uh, we will try to see that with some images and again come back to the topic with some more realization the image is partially showing uh, some wall paintings for public display another image from a miniature painting it was in the beginning of 20th century that a handful of scholars started recognizing the aesthetic perspective of the regional artistry and threw light on them through their writings and speeches in 1916 anand kumar swami commented on uh, the pahari painting uh, which was less sophisticated and not too known at that point of time uh, from rajasthan uh, that was quite worthwhile of appreciation and collection uh, it was anand kumar swami who uh, revived who tried to revive all forms of indian art regardless of academic or non academic style to the european audiences his writings enabled the viewers to grasp the aesthetics of rural and vernacular term of artistic expression 1900 was a time when the contemporary art scenario of europe was experiencing a dynamic idea of modernism so the educated and visionary art lovers and art collectors of bengal could identify the unique virtue of indian folk painting in non academic category they threw light on the archaic yet bold expression fresh spontaneity confidence simplicity of means and the very distinctive style that is of folk art seen in the picture is a old piece that is kept in the museum of the uh, traditional uh, practice of uh, storytelling through a shrine shrine the tradition is still living and we call it the covered painting uh, which has its location near udaipur rajasthan but this is from a uh, traditional one uh, which has this typical western indian influence and see how the story unfolds in a shrine there are different uh, facets that opens slowly and then we also see in the picture that there is a central deity uh, who is the uh, who is there in the center of the shrine so where the entire uh, shrine is opened and the story is told we reach the 
uh, main god and goddesses at the end of it. There are other images uh, where folk art is finding its new place. Uh, this is from the book building uh, from Tara Books, the publication. And uh, this is done by a Gond, traditional Gond painter. We also see its use in book illustrations, which are painted and then printed in serigraphy. The pillars that are painted with it, also a tomb in Jawahar Kala Kendra, painted by Srilal Joshi and the family. There are walls from, Shri, uh, from Raghurajpur, Shekhavati, Navalgar, a Madhubani painting on paper in an exhibition place and see the difference that is there in a popular art which is made with a commercial means. Of course, the purpose is not very different, but it follows a very different aesthetic perspective. Madhubani painting painted on saris. the roadside idols and some old toys broken which are found. It follows the similar kind of aesthetics. Art critic Ajit Ghosh and Mukulde, uh, they were amongst the pioneers who began to collect and preserve the leaving folk art uh, in 1920s to 1930s. Guru Sadadat is another name that we discussed earlier. Through them, we get to understand how the tradition was significant for them and is still significant in today's time. With that, we are also going to discuss another tradition which is uh, a purely Indonesian tradition uh, which is connected to the uh, Java and uh, other regions uh, like which are connected uh, places and the tradition is known as Vewang Kulit. Vewang means shadow, Kulit are the puppets. So, this is the shadow puppetry very commonly known as Vewang Kulit. Uh, the performances you can find in internet and many other sources, they are still very popular. Uh, that is, uh, during this performance, the like what is known as the Vewang Kulit, the performance, the master storyteller, who is known as the Tok Dalang, uh, he introduces the shadow uh, shadow puppets and he projects it from the backdrop. So, what we see are the salutes of the characters and then they tell the story and the puppets uh, they dance and they tell the story with uh, proper songs and narratives. So, let us see the image. This is one image uh, that I mentioned where the master story, uh, master storyteller uh, who is known in the common like local language as the uh, Tok Dalang, who conducts the shadow from behind the screen by reciting the tale with appropriate sounds and movements. The story goes uh, that in Indonesia, when there had been a dominance of the Hindu rulers, they popularized his uh, puppet shows. There had been actors who played the roles of uh, the characters from Ramayana and Mahabharata and they acted out on stage. These uh, performances were the uh, main mode of uh, recreation that 
the local people had at that time and they were highly popular at that time also but then when it was taken over by the islamic rulers they didn't appreciate the use of characters and human images in those uh, stories those performances so what they did was very different what they did that they banned it for a while and then uh, people started missing it uh, so to have some mercy on them they only allowed uh, the salutes of the figures to be shown in those images which are not uh, highly representational they do not have the naturalism into it they are much more patternized and hence it was allowed by the islamic patronage uh, and the rulers and they didn't uh, they, they removed the ban from it so what we see right now are those shadows they're very rich uh, and most of those uh, performers who write the script who write the lyrics the stories and also uh, perform there uh, also you know seeing the songs uh, make the puppets they are mostly from the islamic communities so they are the believer of a uh, different religious faith and they make stories which are they make characters and tell uh, stories with uh, those characters and they also uh, tell the moral ethos of hindu uh, religious epics and stories so that is like a combination there shows a uh, religious plurality in its pure form and upon asking uh, when we read the interviews of those performers most of the time uh, they have one point to make that uh, they connect to the characters when they work with the character of arjuna and the karna or uh, ram or sita or ravan or any other important characters or hanuman what they feel is they try to understand their personality and they get inspired by their ideologies their principles and that keeps them going in their uh, creations uh so that is the importance of making it multi uh, religious and also by uh, having this kind of uh, plurality it no wrong no longer remains uh, a religious practice and it gets a wider spectrum